gather celebrating the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Last week, Jesus gave his power to his disciples and sent them out two by two into the world to continue to do that work that, uh, that they were called to do. And as we gather in celebration, we prepare our hearts and our minds to be nurtured and strengthened by this same Christ who sends us with that same power into the world. And we remember that we have some level of responsibility to one another along the way. And we pray for each other. So together we can say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And together we give glory to God as we say, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor to your servants, O Lord, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, we may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need no longer fear and tremble. And none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they shall give him, the Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my shepherd, shepherd. There, there is nothing, nothing I shall want. want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The, the Lord, Lord is my shepherd, shepherd. There, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The, the Lord, Lord is my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is nothing I shall want. 
Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The, the Lord, Lord is my shepherd. shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, Jesus' heart was moved with pity for them. For they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sent out into the world two by two, they come back. And kinds of experiences they had, even if they are not written down in the books of the Gospels, there is still this reality that, that they understand themselves as emissaries of the power of Jesus to go out into the world to proclaim uh, repentance and to invite people back into this relationship with God to offer some healing, some cures along the way, and to cast out demons. But it's exhausting work. And the Gospel tells us that they return. And Jesus invites them to take a little bit of time away, to go to a deserted place. And such is the plan, but everybody else finds out about it, and what happens? There they do, there they go, withdrawing in a boat, and people are going to know exactly where they're going and some boats move faster than others and messages get uh, re get proclaimed and revealed in a whole variety of different ways there's thankfully no cell phones or anything like this at this time so there's no gr uh, welcoming party when they get there but at the same time there's also no real escape except for this little interlude on board the ship have enough time to eat, to maybe rest a bit until they get to the side. And as they get reach the shore once more, it is Jesus who looks out and recognizes this hubbub of activity, and he has compassion 
for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And that notion of recognizing a whole flock of sheep scrambling around, looking for some kind of purchase somewhere on the ground around them, trying to find a place and trying to find access to the shepherd. And Jesus' heart is moved with pity. But so too, the disciples' hearts are going to be moved with pity as well. They have no idea what to do. They're uncertain. The challenge is there. Where will there be shepherds enough for all these people? It's a great question for us to have in our mind. Because in a whole variety of different ways, when we look at the world in which we live, it's easy to people, it's easy for people to see what this gospel and what this first reading from the prophet Jeremiah are about. People running hither and yon, back and forth, scrambling, trying to find some kind of peace. It's that challenge that came out of last week as well. That recognition that mob activities are never healthy. Those activities that take place in crowds are very often without any kind of center point, without any kind of real reason or rationality. There is no logic in large crowds. And they're scurrying around like sheep looking for a shepherd. And that's a great challenge for us. Because it's so often we want to find human shepherds. We want to find humans who will be these perfect leaders for us all. But it's never been the case. And if we're really certain about what it means to live as a people who are united, it means that if we are united, it has to be with a principle that is something more than just a human principle. We don't do very well when all we are focused on is a personality cult, or when we're looking at someone who is a great charismatic speaker. We don't do very well because that's not the kind of leadership that leads any place good. Very seldom is a good leader universally loved. I think about that in terms of Pope Francis. You will find a whole variety of people split on one side or another, and they're still scrambling around, and yet at the same time, he is a good leader. He is the Pope. He is the one that has been set aside by the Holy Spirit to lead the church at this time to service and to a, an, an acknowledgement that we as human beings have a much larger vision that must be at play for us. For whether we're thinking about our nation or whether we're thinking about any of the nations of Western Europe or Asia, or South America, or anywhere else in the world, we see that people's energy and their anger and their frustration and uncertainties and fears have come to light. And there is absolutely no shortage of opinions that are out there. Social media continues to tell us over and over again that everyone has an opinion. And even though things that are purported to be news agents, news reporters, often take refuge behind the idea, well, we're really more of an entertainment channel. Scrambling, hungering for some kind of leadership. But this Jesus who stands on the edges of the shore whose heart is moved with pity for us. 
the one who sent his disciples out into the world and who are standing back and wondering, what in the world are we supposed to do now? Is it such a far cry from what we experience in the world right now? And maybe these summer days are the perfect time for us to take a step back and say, what kind of shepherd do I want to follow? Do I want simply another personality or individual who has some kind of popular appeal? Or will I look to the one who is truly the good shepherd? who sees us and knows us in the very depth of who we are and who loves us and whose justice is revealed in mercy. And if we truly are companions for each other, if we are like those disciples last week who are sent out two by two, and if we are really honest and we look at those people who are our partners in life, if not necessarily our partners in crime. Maybe it's a good time for us to kind of take a look at that and recognize that even together we still follow the Good Shepherd, this Jesus who continually challenges us and who continually promises us mercy, reconciliation, and healing. This Jesus who prepares a banquet for us fills our cups to overflowing, this Jesus who will lead us and guide us, this Jesus who stands on the shore and sees us and knows that we're scrambling inside. Maybe in some silence and in some reflection, perhaps even in a moment or two when we have uh, some time to spare in a deserted place, Maybe this is the time for us to acknowledge again and again, you, Jesus, are the Good Shepherd. Help me to hear your voice more clearly. Help me to hear and follow where it is that you lead. Help me to find my peace in you. The world is a complicated and difficult place, even on its best days. Sometimes we have to sort of separate ourselves out from the frenzy and to acknowledge that no human leader is going to satisfy all our needs, all our wants, or all our desires. But the only one who can is the one who does, and the one who feeds us, and the, ones, and the one who offers us mercy. The Good Shepherd who leads us and guides us to the pastures of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So we come before our God this day confident 
and intent upon the gaze of the Good Shepherd who sees us fully and clearly. Give our world leaders the gifts of wisdom and love that the barriers of hatred and pride that exist might be broken down through compassion and mercy. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. Bless your church with the gifts of your Holy Spirit that all your people might recognize those things which scatter us and separate us. May we always remember the reconciliation you have brought us in Christ. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gaps that exist in our relationships, for the alienation we sometimes feel, bring us to unity in heart, mind, or spirit. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant healing in whatever way is necessary to all those who bear the wounds of illness, disease, and grief in their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who travel during these summer days, for those who serve the common good, especially law enforcement and fire service personnel, grant them safety in all their work. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the particular intentions that each of us bring to Mass this weekend. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Welcome all those who have died, who have been guided by the Good Shepherd, to rejoice in the unity of your kingdom with all the angels and saints. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the Good Shepherd, who continually sees us and knows us, looks with compassion and mercy upon us. Hear our prayers and our petitions. Hear the deep needs of your people who turn to you this day. Hear our prayers, for we make them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. My friends, pray that this my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to the Lord our God. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept this sacrifice from your faithful people. Make them holy as you bless the gifts of your servant Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty, and that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you never cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer us pardon, and you call upon us to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never have you turned away from us, and though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. 
Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation. And as we turn back to you in spirit, you give us hope in Christ Jesus. And you grant us a desire to be of service to others while we entrust ourselves more fully to the working of the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the powers of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join with the heavenly hymn of countless hosts as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. And from the world's very beginning, you have ceaselessly been at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out upon them the power of your spirit, that they may become for us the body and the blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your daughters and sons. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before, he was out, before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread, and he gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed upon the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, he handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the whole human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those whom you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son. Grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as we partake of this one bread and one chalice, we may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption, made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him, and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And longing for the fullness of God's kingdom, when the eyes of the Good Shepherd will be fulfilled in seeing us gathered together, we pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power.
power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. Wherever we happen to be, let us share with one another a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Graciously be present to your people, O Lord. Lead those whom you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass ascended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. <laughs>